Hello, this is Denise Kidder, and I'm the Education Coordinator for Friends of the Caw. And I'm here today to present another Caw Minute. And this is part of our mini study of macroinvertebrates, and this is part two. So here I am at Little Mill Creek, and what you're going to see next is a video showing you how to actually use a kick net stream side, creek side, or at a shallow section of a pond where you would actually seine for macroinvertebrates. But before I get started with that video, I actually wanted to show you a picture of some students that are actually using a kick net a, here at Turkey Creek in Miriam, Kansas. And they are seining for macroinvertebrates. This is an eighth grade class so that you can kind of get a picture in your mind of what it would look like if you had a, a small group of students actually using the net. What you're going to do, you can start back here and you're going to work your way towards the net. You're going to kick, stir up the pebbles, the things that are underneath, get down in here. Okay, this is our third attempt with our kick net, and we have a lot of activity on the net today, <laughs> this time around. So I'm going to try to show you some of this. Right here, I'm zooming in. This is a little macroinvertebrate, and he's not moving right now, but we're going to spray him with some water and then, of course, put him in our tray. But I wanted to show you what the net looked like because we have some stuff going around there. Look at that. That's so cool. Yep, I think that's a leech. And Lydia, can you grab the spray bottle? Yeah. It's some water on the ground for us. We have some worms, of course, over here. So this is a tub full of the macroinvertebrates that we seined for down at Mill Creek. And we're going to spend a little bit of time identifying them in a bit. But I wanted to show you them all together. One happy little macro family. I believe that oh, that's probably a leech there. It's kind of fun to watch swimming. Of course, leeches are uh, very pollution tolerant. The dam supply that is right next to it is somewhat tolerant. And we've got worms and all kinds of fun stuff in there. So you may remember from last time that I mentioned some of these macros are herbivores or carnivores. Well, they also can be divided up into groups according to some very specific jobs that they have. And some of this depends upon some of their very special body parts. So they may be a shredder, a scraper or grazer, a collector, or a predator. The shredders, well, they can chew very well. So they feed on large, decaying organic matter or living plants. They like hanging around at the headwaters and they prefer the shade. The scrapers or grazers, well, they're found in the middle of the watershed and they like the sun. They scrape off that algae from the rocks and the wood surfaces. The collectors, 
They can be found throughout the stream, and some of these macros are very clever. They actually spin a net and can capture their food. And last of all, we have the predators. They are also found throughout the stream. They have strong, extendable mouthpieces that are very good for biting and chewing. So, I hope you enjoyed part two of our mini study of macroinvertebrates. There will be one last and final session on macros, and I can't wait to show, share some of the little videos of some of these amazing creatures that we found. As a little preview of what to expect for next time, I'd like to share with you a short little clip of a macro who totally changes his look when he transforms from a larva to an adult. So in this picture, in this tub, you're actually gonna see a damselfly, but now the one we wanna focus in on is this crane fly larva. He is uh, somewhat toler tolerant to pollution, and he, so he's found in good and fair quality water. He's like a little caterpillar. He has a segmented body. He has no larva. He has no legs as a larva. He's kind of like grub-like. He's plump and he has a fleshy body. Now, as an adult, and you can see the picture of the adult here on the right-hand side, they are very poor flyers and they have a V-shaped abdomen. And as an adult, they only live a few days. And you may see some of these flying around actually attached to your house and your front doors and things like that. So take a look around, see if you can find some. So until next time, this is Denise Kidder signing off. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about macroinvertebrates.